Samsung's new flagship, the Galaxy S20 Ultra is here, and if you're wondering what happened to the S11 through S19, well, isn't it obvious? This phone ate them. It's a monster, with a camera bump to match. Inside that camera bump, you've got a 108 megapixel sensor and another camera with a 100x zoom, which is pretty useful, I guess. All the hardware specs are insane, but our favorite has to be this screen with its 120 hertz refresh rate. Here it is next to the iPhone 11 Pro Max, slowed down to about one fifth speed. Additionally, you've got an advertised 5,000 milliamp hour battery, and you know what, we're not actually convinced all of these features can physically fit in here. Let's take it apart just to make sure. A giant phone like this requires giant tools. We start with hefty helpings of heat from our heat gun and some power lifting from our heavy duty suction coat. The adhesive holding this back cover down feels slightly more difficult to remove than recent Galaxy phones, but it looks about the same, so it's probably just our mind playing tricks on us. The giant Mahi driver from our Manticat will help us remove all the screws holding the antenna and metal shield in place. However, we may need a better view to see it happen. Frustratingly, some of these screws are in wells, making them a little tricky to dig out once they're unscrewed. We disconnect and lift up the wireless charging coil to remove one last screw, and the antenna shield combo lifts free. Next, we peel back the rest of that wireless charging coil and get our first clear view of how this thing is put together. It looks pretty much like a Note 10 Plus 5G, minus the stylus. We pop out the lower frame and speaker just because it's there, and then we tackle the giant motherboard. This stacked motherboard is a monster. It's thick and home to not only the giant camera assembly, but also the first of three 5G millimeter wave antennas resting on its own little heatsink. The camera assembly features a 48 megapixel telephoto camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, and the monster 108 megapixel wide angle camera, which has a sensor about double the surface area of the iPhone 11 Pro Max's primary 12 megapixel wide angle sensor. There's one other item of interest found in the camera assembly, this light bending periscope. At one end is a prism with its own optical image stabilization, which redirects the image 90 degrees through the sliding 4X zoom lens. That combined with some sensor cropping and digital zoom gets you to 100X magnification. It's pretty unusual hardware for a smartphone, allowing for true optical zoom at the expense of a little extra interior space. As usual with Samsung phones, the battery is cemented in place, and once again, alcohol is the solution to all of our problems. Well, alcohol and a little patience. The alcohol softens the adhesive, and constant pressure from our heavy-duty suction cup allows us to remove this ultra-large battery. This thing packs in 19.3 watt hours and is a huge increase in capacity over its contemporaries, like the iPhone 11 Pro Max, which is 15.04 watt hours, and the Galaxy Note 10 Plus 5G, which is 16.56 watt hours. We spot two more millimeter wave antennas along the edge of the S20 Ultra's frame, and with those removed, we're left with the display. For the most part, we hate removing Samsung displays. They're fused on tight, time-consuming, and precarious to pry off, but maybe this display is different. No, it's not. This 6.9 inch AMOLED display may have a super fast refresh rate, but it's painfully slow to replace if you crack your screen. For all the amazing advances in this phone, about the only thing Samsung didn't level up is the repairability. We're scoring it a three out of 10, which is pretty average by galactic standards. Samsung has the means to do better here, but they've stuck with the same glued together design that's frustrating to open and makes basic screen and battery repairs frustratingly difficult. The S20 Ultra is not without some positive points though. You only need a single screwdriver and unlike S10 models, the charging port isn't soldered to the main board. If you could repair the last Samsung phone, you'll be able to fix this one. 